Years ago, Mrs. Billy Sunday came to our church in Texas. Ma Sunday, we called her affectionately. I was driving Ma from the airport, and I said, Mrs. Sunday, could I ask you a question, please? Were your years with Billy Sunday happy? And she said to me, and that big old big lady, tall, gruff, first time I ever saw her, I'd gotten tied up in a traffic jam, was late to the airport. She said, you Reverend Hiles? I said, I'm Jack Hiles. She said, next time you be on time or there won't be a next time. And I said, yes, ma'am. <coughs> yes, ma'am. <coughs> and I was talking with her. And I said, were your years of it is Sunday happy? And she said, yes. Here's what she said to me. She said, Brother Hiles, Billy was not at home much. She said, the truth is, sometimes Billy wouldn't speak to me for days because he was busy. And if he was home, he was busy. Most of the time, he was talking to God more than he was talking to me or anybody else. But listen to me. Listen to me. He said, she said, here's where I found happiness. She said, for all those years, I was with Billy. She said, I realized I was living with and serving God's man. And she said, Brother Hiles, I kept my eye on Billy to look for his every need. If I thought he needed something, I saw he got it. And when I did it for him, Ma Sunday told me, she said, when I did it for Billy Sunday, I'd pause and take a deep breath and sigh and say, I got to do that for God's man. I got to do that for Billy Sunday. And she said, I focused my eyes on him all the time. And she said, never one moment, never one moment of my life did I ever live for a moment without realizing that that's Billy Sunday there. I live with Billy Sunday. He's God's man. And she said, I sacrificed my own life for his, and my happiness was his, and my delight was his, and his beckon, his need was my royal commander, my command, she said. And she said, I watched his every move. And I said when she was gone, I've said it as I relived it time and time again, that's the way I want to be for Jesus. And by the way, if that's the way you are for Jesus, you'll be happy. You'll always have your thrill. Think of it. Think of it. This morning, I stand behind this pulpit for the king. I read the Bible for the king. The choir sang for the king. We're preaching for the king. I'm here in Christ's stead. In his place, I dwell with the king. Oh, let me tell you something. You Sure, you'll lose your zeal if you go out and hobnob with the devil's crowd all week. Let me tell you something. You'll lose your zeal in Christmas if you do too much shopping and not enough on your face praying and walking with the king. You'll lose your zeal if to you Christmas is, is, is buying and selling and wrapping and unwrapping. Now, I'm not against those things. Not against them. Not against them at all. But I'm saying in God's name, if we quit walking and dwelling with the king for two weeks or three weeks or a month, we'll find the burden gone, the joy gone, the thrill gone, the expectancy gone. If we don't stop to realize we dwell with the king. Live with him. Don't just come to visit the king every Sunday morning. Live with him. Don't just come twice on Sunday. Live with him. Don't just come Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Live with him. Get up in the morning and say, good morning, your majesty. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll go where you want me to go. I'm your servant and you're the king. All day long, stop to realize I live with the King of kings and Lord of lords. I work for the king. I dwell with the king. 